Hello, my name's Andy. Welcome to episode 21 of Keeping Water. In this week's episode, there's a fish focus on the two youngest tench, a look at a complete range of water parameter tests, and in the weekly update, I'll be looking at the progress of the fish's winter feeding. I've had more subscribers again this past week. Thanks very much to all the new and old ones. If you're not subscribed, please consider it. I release videos weekly, even during the winter, and have a few plans for 2021 you might find interesting. Right, let's get started. Not many suggestions for the rut, so I'm going to go with my fallback idea, which was galleys. This is short for Gallimimus, the dinosaurs in Jurassic Park, which are in the they're flocking this way quote, because well, that's what the rud do, kind of. Anyway, back to this week's fish focus. In addition to Judy, the original and biggest tench, I have two other tench. There's one female and one male and they tend to swim with each other most of the time. Judy either swimming with them, the carp, or doing her own thing. I bought them in early 2019 as a potential breeding pair or as fish to breed with my existing tench. They did the usual tench thing of disappearing completely for a few weeks after joining the pond, but once they reappeared, they've appeared calm and confident. They grew well in the first year and have continued to do so since, the male especially having the biggest percentage growth this year. They feed predominantly off the bottom and on plant matter in the pond. Unlike Judy, they try to feed from the surface, but are really nervous and rarely actually take the pellet. Their favourite food are small sturgeon pellets and bloodworm from mid-water. They're a bit more deferential to the carp than Judy is, and like the rud will move out of their way. They like to swim and root around by the small slope where the pond changes depth and will often hang around in that spot when resting.
They do like to explore other areas too, especially in the summer when the slightly shallower part of the pond gets the sun and warms up first. As I detailed in previous episodes, the female one had some mouth and fin issues in the early autumn. It appeared to be mouth and fin rot, so I treated for that. It was precipitated by the netting and measuring I did, either due to direct injury or stress. She continued feeding however and from the first treatment it didn't get any worse and appears to be slowly getting better. As the weather gets colder fish tend to heal more slowly and we'll see into spring how it resolves. So, on to naming. This time, however, I only really need a name for the small female one, the male I have a name for. For some reason, his big paddle-like pectoral fins and large dorsal remind me of a killer whale, so I'm going to call him Orca. The female I have no clue for, so I would welcome any suggestions you have, please leave them in the comments section below. This week I have completed water tests with the full range of kits I now have. Ammonia, Nitrite, Nitrate, Oxygen, KH, GH and PH. I also tested for chlorine, but didn't film it. What follows is a video of the process. I've paused some bits for clarity and speeded up others for speed, um, as there's only so many drops you can watch being dripped. I'll spare you my voice during most of this and add some text to explain what's going on. However, at the end, I'll return to do a roundup and review the results.
Before I start though, I'll apologise for the camera angle as I realise I hide the vial too much of the time. I'll do better next time.
Right, test done. So it's time for an old favourite. What have I learned? To do that, let's look at the results in groups. First, nitrification related. Ammonia is at 0.25 milligrams per litre. Obviously zero is always better, although technically that's not absolutely possible, but I'm not too bothered. It's a tricky time of year with the fish producing less, but still some waste, and the filters working poorly at these lower temperatures. It's not a one-off value, however, as pH and water temps affect what are actually safe ammonia levels. At my pH, more of that later, and the current water temp, it's okay. I'd really recommend watching the Dazzle Koi channel. He explains about water quality much better than I can. I'll link it in the description. Nitrite is at less than 0.3 milligrams per litre, which could be zero or could be 0.29. Either way, as low as my kit can measure, so I'll consider that good. I could go as far to say that my filters must be doing a reasonable job still on working on the ammonia that's present if I'm getting as near as I can measure to zero nitrite. Nitrate. The result of 12.5 milligrams per litre is as low as I ever have it. I've never, even in the summer, when all the plants are growing, have zero nitrate. It's well in the healthy zone and I've no worries. Next, pH, GH and KH. KH measures the amount of carbonates and bicarbonates in the water, which affect its buffering capacity, thereby helping to prevent pH from large swings in value, for instance from heavy rainfall, which can negatively affect your fish. Most literature I've seen suggests a KH of 89 to 142 parts per million, although it varies, and mine is at 143.2 parts per million, which I'll live with. My pH is pretty stable, so I'm happy. GH is a measurement of dissolved minerals in the water, or general hardness. Less critical than KH, with a range of 60 to 160 parts per million being okay. Mine is 192 parts per million, which I think is just due to the local hard water, and nothing that's causing a problem or due to any other issues. pH is 8, which has been stable at for every test I've done. This is slightly the high side of the good range, and again, no worries. Finally, on to oxygen. As you'll see, it's hard to read, but I'm vaguely sure it's roughly, possibly okay. Certainly, I've not had any signs from the fish that there's a lack of oxygen, but I'll keep monitoring over the next few months and maybe even learn how to read it properly. As for the unfilmed chlorine test, it was zero again. So, my water's okay, not brilliant, but nothing to worry too much about. I probably should point out also that I do these tests at the end of the week, the day before the weekly filter clean and water change. So technically, you could think that things might be at their higher levels. Anyway, I've lots I want to implement in 2021 to ensure this continues or indeed improves, and regular testing would be the most exact way of monitoring that. I'd love to hear your thoughts, suggestions and advice around this so please feel free to post some comments below. The weather this week has continued to get colder, as has the water. I've not fed for a few days, but for one day, I put the GoPro and then afterwards a small amount of wheat germ food into the pond.
As you can see, Mira is having a slow inspection in the detritus for food, and all the fish are generally swimming slowly around, with the tench more frequently just waiting on the floor of the pond. The wheat germ once again triggered Mira to feed, with Koira following a little while after. The tench occasionally showed some interest, but unlike last week, didn't actually feed at all. The galleys, the rudd, continued to only pay an instinctive reaction to the pellets drifting downwards in the water, but didn't show any real interest in feeding. The leaves are nearly all fallen from the overhanging trees, which is great news, as once they've all gone I can clear them all from the garden and remove the netting. I've got some annual leave over the next week, so I'm really hoping for some strong winds to help the remaining leaves fall so I can complete the clean up before Christmas. Although I appreciate the safety aspect of the netting and the small reduction in wind chill, there's a greater advantage in being able to see the fish more easily and I can't wait to get the netting off. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Keeping Water. I really do appreciate it. Please give it a like if you've enjoyed it and if you've not already subscribed, please click on the button to not miss future episodes. In next week's episode, I'm going to reveal the small female tench's name, hopefully show the final complete clear up of leaves and the net removal and include December's underwater watch. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.